Cursor AI just came out, and if this is your first time using this AI code editor, this video is for you. In this video, I will walk you through the whole process from installing to opening your project with Cursor to various tips and tricks you can use to increase your productivity. If you're new to my channel, I have a website, kevinwoodrobotics.com, where I teach robotics and AI, so go ahead and check it out. First thing you want to do is sign up for an account. So go to the top right corner right here and click sign in. And once you click sign in, go ahead and fill out your email address, and you're going to get a confirmation code at your email address. Next up, you want to go ahead and download Cursor. Go ahead and click on the link right in the middle here that says download for free and you're going to get an exe file, so go ahead and go through the steps, and you're going to have your Cursor app installed. After it's done downloading, go ahead and launch the Cursor app. So here I'm going to go ahead and type in Cursor and launch my app, and here it opens up the last folder that I was working on in VS Code, but if you want to launch Cursor in a new folder, you want to first make sure you have a folder that you created where you want your code to be, and then go ahead and click File, Open Folder, and you will open up Cursor in the folder that you want to be working in. So when you first open up Cursor, you're not going to see anything. Um, here, what I've done is I've already created a file called main.py, and you're going to notice that there is no chat window available right now, but there's a shortcut called Control-L. Once you hit Control-L, you can see that we have a chat bar that shows up on the right. So the first thing you want to do is try to have the chat generate code for us. So right here on the upper right corner, you can see that I gave it a prompt that says generate Python code that remakes the Pokemon Red game. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and see what happens. So I'm just going to hit Enter. And you can see that once I hit Enter, it's going to start generating code for me line by line. And you can see that at the very end, once it's done, it gives a basic instruction of what the code is doing. So what you can do after it's done generating, there's a couple of options. So you can see here, there's a couple of things you could press. There's the Ask, Copy, and Apply. So if I go ahead and click Apply, it'll directly put the code into my main.py file. And then you could go ahead and click Accept. So this will allow all the code to directly copy and paste into this file. So let's go ahead and run this and see how it looks. I'm going to save it and then hit Run. So you can see that here is just a red dot. Okay, So it's a very rudimentary version of the game so far, but you could quickly add on features to it as you wish. So once we have a basic prompt written and have some code generated, you could give it more instructions to modify your current existing code. So here you can see that I gave it some new instructions. So if you look at my chat window here, I said modify code so there is grass and I can encounter random Pokemon and battle with them when I find them. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and see what happens. So as before, it's going to start processing my prompt and generating code. So if I scroll a little bit, you can see that it's starting to generate more code for me. And then um, it's taking, I think, because it has more instructions now, it took a little bit longer. But you can see as before, it generated the code and then write a short description of what it's doing. But I could go ahead and click Apply and Accept again. So you can see that now I have a total of about 130 lines of code. I'm going to quickly save this, and I'm going to run it and see what happens. So let's see if it does any better. So you can see now there's two patches of red. And you can see that I have a Pikachu and a Caterpie. And you can see that I can either fight. Uh, there's a bag, Pokemon, and run. So you can see that it's starting to develop here. And if I hit the space bar, you see some weird stuff happen. So you can see that it's starting to build up slowly. OK, so now just for fun, let's go ahead and give it another command to see if it could improve on some of the things that we saw earlier. So here, I'm going to say, show the Pokemon picture when I encounter them and add more grass patches. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and see what happens. So you can see now it's starting to generate code for me. And let's see. It's Almost done. You can see how fast it is. It's pretty good in terms of the processing speed. But after it's all done, you can see that it finished. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit Apply. And there's an option that says Apply to Entire File. I'm going to hit Accept. So you can see now that I have just a few extra lines of code. Um, but let me see. I'm going to go ahead and save this and run it again and see what happens. So you can see that it's expecting some Pikachu files. So 
Uh, if you scroll down here, you can see that um, what it's expecting is it wants me to provide pictures of Pikachu, Rattata, Pidgey, and Caterpie. So you can see here, I went ahead and added some pictures of our Pokemon, and I'm going to rerun this and see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and run the Python file. And you see that now we have a few more squares. So let's see what happens if I encounter a new square. And you can see that I have a Pikachu and Caterpie show up. So pretty good. Starting to make some progress. OK, so now let's say you're pretty new to coding and you don't quite know what a line of code does. So if you look here, you could go ahead and highlight a line of code or even a section of code. So let's say I hide it, highlighted uh, this whole thing here. What you can do is once you highlight it, you could you could see here that you could click the chat button or control L. And you can see that it brings the whole line of code into the chat. And what you can do here is ask it some questions. You could say like, what is this doing? And then once you ask it, what is this doing? You can see that it's going to start generating code for you. Or not code, I mean the documentation or a description of what the code is doing. It'll talk about line by line what each line is doing. So this might be a great way if you're new to coding and trying to figure out what each line is doing. OK, so you can also directly modify your code in the file. So here I'm going to select the green, and then I'm going to click the Edit button. So you could click, once you click Edit, you're going to see a window that pops up that allows you to ask it some questions directly here. So I'm going to say uh, modify the green so that it's a darker shade of green. I'm going to go ahead and click Generate. And you can see that it's going to propose a new one. So you could go ahead and accept the change. And I'm going to try to run this to see if it looks any better here. So you can see now my green is a little bit darker. So it took the change correctly. So you can also add new lines of code in your file directly um, without using the chat on the right. So what you can do here is select a line of code and then click Edit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say add three new colors below, for example. And you can see that it generated three new colors red, blue, and yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and accept this. So you can see this is a quick way of coding directly with the AI tool. So there's also a nice feature where you could fix problems in the AI chat. So here you can see that I purposely misspelled one of the words here. So if you look here, you can see that I spelled grass patches wrong. And you can see this is a red squiggly. So if you hover your cursor over it, you're going to see the AI fix in chat. And if I go ahead and click that, you can see that it's going to start um, giving you a proposed solution. And you can see here that it caught the spelling mistake. And you can go ahead and click the Apply button. And you're going to see that it updates the change to the correct spelling. And let's say now you've become very comfortable with your code base and you want to fill out some code automatically. You could go ahead and start typing. So you can see that here I have screen. And it'll predict what you might call next based on what the program looks like. And if you were to hit Tab, it'll complete everything else for you. But here, I'm not going to actually use this, so I'm going to undo it. OK, so if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.